بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Tariq Khaled. I'd like to welcome to our program here at Sharjah TV. Doing good and we hope by Allah's mercy and grace that all our viewers today are doing good in relationship to the pleasure of our Lord and creator and sustainer. And of course, if you're doing good by that criteria, then everything is good for you. If you're not, then get yourself together. Today we want to talk about paradise. And there's a lot of people out there, oh, you know, I don't believe in paradise, man. Your paradise is right here on this earth. I said, well, if your mindset, your mentality is limiting you to that which you understand of this world, which is extremely limited, even though the screens produce a lot of imagination, then shame on you because we're talking about something that is unlimited. And it's only as limited as you want it to be. And Allah has created it differently. So let's see what Allah says in the translation. This is from Surah Sajda. This is Surah number 32 and verse number 17. Bismillah rahim I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen. But the key to this is what is said in the beginning. For my righteous slaves. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves, this big question. Am I righteous? Or I can say, what is the criteria for righteousness? If, if I want this, what do I need to do? What kind of person do I need to be? What kind of life do I need to live? That's a big question mark for us. And that's something that we, of course, have to get in focus and be real about. As we make a comparative analysis about the things in this world, don't we have to follow some type of system to gain success in worldly things in some way or another. And even the people who are, let's say, involved in vice, in evil deeds for profit, they have a system. There's a system to their madness, isn't it? We don't want to participate in that system. Of course, we don't recommend it. And we recommend all those people who find themselves involved in these kind of activities for the sake of your own soul, correct yourself. Now, we're not talking about in relationship to the law, the law, of course, goes without saying. And if you follow the law, inshallah ta'ala, within the guidelines of law. And when we say the law, we mean ultimately Allah's law. And if you're obeying Allah's law, then inshallah, it becomes easy for you to follow the law of the land. So that's the criteria, and we need to understand that. And, and I'm speaking to people, maybe sometimes people who are uh, deviating one way or the other, crossing the line here and there or listening, or maybe you know somebody's listening. Call them to the right path. Don't be shamed. Don't be shy. Call them while there is time, while they are still living. There's no guarantee that any of us will be alive one second from now, let alone tomorrow. So if you know somebody, call them. Call them to the truth now and say, listen, man, paradise is real. Take time right now to think about it. Look at your life. Look at where you are, look at what's happening in your life, and realize that one day it's all going to be over. And think about what will you do then? Is it real to really think that it's all going to be finished, that everything is going to be over, that whatever you had in this life, this is it? Think twice. So let's continue. So my righteous slaves, what no eye has seen. So Allah is creating things, or let's say not creating, created things which no one has ever seen before. Now, just think about it. How many billions of people have lived on this earth and we don't know how many more people will be born until the day of judgment? And so how many eyes is that? This thing, to put it in perspective, if we talk about imagination, if we go above and beyond what people have seen globally or what they have imagined, so think about the imagination above and beyond what people have actually seen. And of course, the vehicle that we're using today expands that vision, doesn't it? Globally, where a person could be sitting, sitting in Antarctica and know about what's happening in South America, as an example. And he'll never, neither one will see the other ever in life, but be aware and conscious somewhat about the society and what it looks like. So just imagine it. Put it in perspective how huge this is. We take all of the eyes that have been created or will be created 
and Allah has created something that none of them have seen? How big is that? It's beyond our comprehension, isn't it? No ear has ever heard. We think that we heard all the sounds that have been created around us, all the different music and uh, music from different eras and time. As an example, and particularly if we talk about the musicians who played a lot of music in their different, uh, as they progressed one way or another from the time they started as children to when they become adults as professionals. So what no ear has ever heard. The sounds, how many sounds is there in the world? Think about it. How vast that is. It's, it's unimaginable. And no human heart can comprehend. No human heart can comprehend. Meaning it's above and beyond our ability to understand. So we have some people who are very arrogant who think that, well, I'm among the smartest people in, this, in the world today. And my IQ is very high and my aptitude is so-and-so. But Allah is saying, no. And all of you together, meaning everyone who Allah has created with a high IQ or great innovative capability, you cannot conceive of. All of the people together from the first to the last cannot conceive of what Allah has created paradise. So if we just look at these three things and we see how vast is that? And if we compare it to our limitations as human beings, those of us who think that, you know, we have so much or that we can do so much or we're so great, just think about it. And ask yourself a question just on these simple matters. But let's be positive and sensible, whatever you have, whatever you have done, whatever you aspire to, will it ever equal this? Is it worth sacrificing that for this? Is it worth taking a chance of losing the opportunity to take advantage of this for whatever it is that you're doing in this world today? Or whatever you're planning to do tomorrow? or whatever you have done in the past, because if you've done some things in the past and now you're just sitting, you have a chance to change or to broaden your perspective and understanding. Never mind what Allah has told you, what he has not told you is even greater. SubhanAllah. Allah has revealed the Quran. Allah has sent the Prophet Muhammad to inform us, to show us, to give us information, to give us a map, a road map, if you might call it, a plan, a diagram, the Quran. So this is a guide for mankind until the day of judgment. For those who seek the truth. So what Allah has given us, what Allah is saying, is, what he's given us is nothing. And before that, the Injil, and before that, the Torah, and whatever, ever, whatever revelations came before that. None of this. All of them together, nothing compared to what he has not revealed. Then he recited, no person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. SubhanAllah. So what do you want to do, my dear viewers? And I want everyone, and of course, <laughs> you can respond to us, but everyone now who is looking at these programs, think about it just for right now. Focus on what do you want? When you leave this world, what do you want? Or if, if you're one of those people who thinks, well, it's over. <laughs> when you leave this world, it's finished. There's no more. So think about it now. What do you want to do? What is, what is in your heart? Now, we're talking about Allah has created 
those things which we cannot imagine. And it's reported more or less that for the believer, Allah will give him everything that he could conceive of. Imagine this. Everything which you could imagine. And then, once you're finished, there's nothing else. You, there, you can't, nothing else comes to your mind. You're stunned <laughs> by this presentation. There's nothing else. Your, your mind is blank, for example. Then the law will bring the things which are dismentioned. No eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard. No one has ever conceived of. No heart has ever conceived of. And of course, the things that we wanted will be as they nothing, comparatively speaking. What in this world is worth that? What in this world is worth taking a chance of not obtaining that? And that is a challenge for us every single day. How do I stay on this path so I can grasp this? How do I protect myself from being misguided? How do I control my desires and discipline myself to stay on this straight and narrow path so I may be among those who are blessed to receive that which Allah has created? Another question we ask ourselves, if you're one of the people that does, doesn't believe or you have friends or family members who are non-believers, what do we do to encourage them to believe? One of the things is to sit and read to them about paradise. And, and Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, Allah, reported from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Whoever believes in Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa offers prayers perfectly and fast the month of Ramadan will be granted paradise as a right by Allah, no matter whether he fights in the cause of Allah, remains in the land where he is born. The people said, oh, sallallahu alayhi wa shall we acquaint the people with this good news? He, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa said, paradise has 100 levels which Allah has reserved for the mujahideen who fight in his cause. And the distance between each of the two grades is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. So when you ask Allah for something, ask for al thardos which is the best and highest part of paradise. I, the narrator, think he said, above it, Firdos is the throne of the most merciful. From it originates the rivers of paradise. So the throne of Allah SWT above this. What do you want? <laughs> I'll ask you, my dear viewers, what is it that you want? We just described very briefly the methodology of obtaining it. First of all, accept Islam. Establish the prayer. Fast in the month of Ramadan. Stay steadfast in your belief system. Now, many people will say, oh, well, brother, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of caught up these days in my lifestyle. And, uh, you know, I, can't, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Well, let's look at that statement. We see people change their life every day, don't we? We see uh, so-called rags to riches stories. Uh, we see people who were involved in crime, in illicit activities, change their lives and be progressive in their lifestyle. So why not you? Where's the value? What do you have in this world that's keeping you from that? Who or what is it that's keeping you from this? Some people say, well, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't really fit on me. Muslim, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Sikh, uh, you know, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything. I just believe in myself. He says, oh, really? 
You just believe in yourself. Well, save yourself from dying. Keep yourself from having to breathe. Keep yourself from having to go to the toilet. Keep yourself where you don't have to drink water or eat food if you're really in control of yourself. These are simple things, aren't they? If you're really in control, this is a myth. All of these things which I just mentioned, we are only doing by Allah's permission. And when Allah says that time is up, it ceases, it'll be over. We cannot do anything about it. Just think about it. There was a story of one man who, he had a pacemaker, which of course is beating, taking the place of his heart, pumping the blood. He was living okay, everything is going all right. He died and the pacemaker was still pumping, but he was dead. Because this is something mechanical, something man-made. We do not have the capability of creating a life. People think they create life, they don't or preserving life. People think that they do, oh, I saved this guy, or I was a, our medical team performed this operation, and this person lived, or this person, due to following my exercise and diet program, he lived to be 100 years old. We need to understand the essence of these things, that everyone is born with an expiration date, every single soul is born with an expiration date. So we need to embrace that, understand it, implement it in our life in a proper manner so we can be on a straight and narrow path so that we will be among the people of paradise. Simple. Very simple. And for a person who says, well, I don't believe that, man. Uh, you know, I live my life, you know, on... <laughs> I live on a thin line. I said, well, what happens when the thin line finishes? What will you do then? So think about it while you have time. And pray. More important, ask Allah for clear guidance. My name is Tara Khalid. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Charlie TV on doing good. And we hope and we pray by Allah's mercy and grace that you are aware and conscious of Allah's grace and you thank him and you praise him for the sake and the salvation of your own soul. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.